Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the number one international bestseller called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. On the show today, our guest is Lorna J. Hines. Lorna is a renowned medium, trance healer, intuitive counselor, and teacher. Lorna has always utilized her healing and intuitive gifts in service to those in pain and those whose pain and suffering may not be visible. She brought and implemented these gifts to her career in mental health and graduate education, spanning more than 30 years as a psychotherapist, researcher, trainer, consultant, personal coach, professor, administrator, and CEO. Guided by spirit And her guides, Lorna's spiritual path expanded. She pursued studies in the science of numerology and hands-on healing. In November 2018, Lorna was credentialed by the Spiritualist National Union in speaking and demonstrating. Committed to her own development, Lorna participates in a weekly development circle with other mediums. She has studied with Tony Stockwell, been mentored by James Van Prague, and has even been designated as one of Van Prague's practitioners on his website. She is also trained with Helen DeVita and Chris Desario in trance and trance healing. In addition to evidential mediumship and counseling, Lorna offers face-to-face and absent trance healing. I'm excited to discover more about this incredible woman on this episode. You can visit Lorna's website at LornaJHines.com. Lorna Hines, a warm welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Well, thank you so much, Sandra. I am absolutely thrilled uh, with the opportunity to speak with your audience. I feel the same about getting the opportunity to speak with you. And I love having new friends and I love having like-minded friends. So where are you in the world today? You're also on the East Coast U.S., correct? Yes, I am. But quite frankly, and I don't mean to answer your question uh, kind of uh, uh, in a very uh, nebulous manner, but because I have such connections with wonderful people internationally um, that I really feel uh, within myself that I am a person that acts and feels and experiences things globally, that although I'm here in New Jersey, that I have absolutely uh, an expanded sense of myself and my relationships with others. Beautiful. Yeah, you are global. And it's good to know also, because so many people think when I have somebody on the show, say they are a medium, that you'd have to travel somewhere to see them, where in this day and age, there's things like Skype and Zoom and telephones. And I have a sneaky suspicion that you work with people all over the world. I have been so fortunate to do so. Yes, indeed. From Australia, New Zealand, of course, throughout the United States, the UK, uh, just I've been very, very fortunate to have that opportunity. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, if you could tell us, how does your story get started in this world of the afterlife? Is this something you've always believed in or grew up with or discovered? If you just share a little bit about Lorna. Thank you so much. Well, I have to say that Before I talk about Lorna, I have to talk a little bit about my family constellation, my extended family, because I do believe, although we didn't designate her as so, my maternal grandmother uh, was a medium and an intuitive. Um, There's a story uh, among the family that goes like, uh, one day my mother and her sisters were preparing to go to a party that they wanted to go to for weeks. This was the type of thing where, uh, oh, gee, you know, all the people in the neighborhood were going to this party. And uh, I have an aunt that sewed and she made all their dresses and my mother could do hair. So she did all their hairstyles and they're all getting ready and the makeup and everything to get ready to go to this wonderful party. Mm-hmm. And and the mother, the, my grandmother, had agreed that they could attend the party. All of a sudden, when they were nearly dressed, she went into the room to them and said, take off your clothes, wash your faces, 
you're not going to the party. They, they whined, they cried, they carried on, but she was completely resolved that they were not going to the party. Well, later the next day, they found that there had been a uh, almost fatal fire at the venue where this party took place. Wow. And people were hurt, people were harmed. And of course, as uh, you can imagine, my mother and aunts uh, were not hurt in any way. Incredible. So, uh, she, and I could give you lots of different stories about her, which we took, which I took rather, growing up as, you know, this is how things are. Uh, she was uh, very uh, spiritual as well. She lit candles, um, at inviting spirit to be closer to her. Uh, she prayed often. She sang hymns mostly uh, mm, all day Sunday as she cooked dinner and different things. So spirituality and also religion were very much a part of my growing up. And when I say religion, some people are somewhat hesitant. Uh, it, it, I was not brought up or inculcated in a mm, prophesizing type of thing mm -hmm. or a fire and brim, brimstone type of thing. I was brought up to believe the, the, the love and benevolence and grace of God and, and of Jesus. Uh, so that, that was kind of the, uh, the, uh, the way in which I was brought up. But um, besides that, I've always been intuitive as a kid. And I always saw things, but I couldn't quite understand what it was that I was seeing. And I would especially see uh, and sense people in spirit within the family that had passed on. My intuitiveness, I think, in, in fact, led me to um, my long career in mental health, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, spanning actually uh, more than 40 years. And I continue on the current scene as a separate uh, practice from my uh, spiritual practice to serve as a psychotherapist and also uh, to teach in a graduate school of social work. Wow. Congratulations but, for the difference you, you make so to much. so many people in so many ways. Well, I think that, I think that's part of what we need to do. I really do. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, uh, I would say somewhere around 2010 or so, I really began to feel that there needed to be something more in my life. I don't know if you, uh, if you and your listeners ever had that kind of feeling of, of searching. Mm -hmm. um, I did join a healing ministry uh, in the church that I belong to, but there was just a search for more and more and more. And uh, I happened to hear uh, a numerologist on the radio and I spent some time with him studying uh, numerology. And then uh, he recommended I listen to this uh, radio show uh, by a woman uh, by the name of Carrie O'Connor in Connecticut, who is a medium, a shaman, an intuitive, lots of different hats. Mm -hmm. And I joined her developmental group for a number of years um, where she really validated a number of the uh, experiences, both intuitively and mediumistically, that I, that I uh, felt and that I experienced. And then lo and behold, as I continued my quest, I had the opportunity to hear about James Von Prague. And uh, I knew about him from before and read his book, but um, I, it, it just didn't go beyond that. And somehow, uh, this uh, uh, workshop that he was giving at Omega landed in front of me in July of 2010. And I uh, arranged to go and en route to the trip, the traffic was horrendous. Even though I left in plenty of time, I didn't get to the class until Friday evening at seven and the class had already begun. 
And once I came into the class, James, who you know is a wonderfully charismatic, gifted uh, teacher and person. Yes. He came down off of the off of the uh, stage as I walked in, and I was trying to be very quiet because I was so embarrassed that I was coming late to his class. But he got down off the stage, came directly to me, and he said. Uh, and I get chills, and I'm I'm quite emotional when I talk about this because it 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 just was so impactful. He he came over directly to me, and he said, "You are going to be transformed this weekend. You have something special." Oh. And the following day, he had us do a meditation and guided us straight into mediumship, and I immediately went into the mediumship experience uh, with a woman who I still have remained in contact with, where she uh, had recently lost her husband uh, through a brain uh, problem. And uh, I was able to give her lots of information. I was able to give her a message from him that she would love again, even though she was in such uh, dire straits of of grief and sadness. But he he said to her, you will love again. And indeed, she has uh, loved again. She has some beautiful grandchildren that are with her. So that's my story. Um, This is how I was introduced to mediumship, but uh, definitely... uh, the intuitive piece has always been with me as well as searching for what I feel is my divine path. I love it. I love it. And then from there, I'm assuming you just continued your own development. And obviously you studied a long time with James Van Prague and congratulations on being one of his recommended practitioners. It's really great. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, but James was very helpful in uh, hosting forums where he brought in a lot of these uh, international uh, mediums. So uh, again, at Omega, he had uh, Mavis Fatilla, mm-hmm. he had Tony Stockwell, he had Paul Jacobs. And so I was able to meet all of these uh, people, learn from them, and then from there, Again, at James's uh, suggestion, he uh, introduced me to uh, Reverend Janet Nohavik. And so I joined her weekly uh, development circle there uh, in her advanced class. And then she began to bring in lots of different people uh, from the UK, and uh, and, including Simone Key. Uh, So my, uh, my education my development, my technical uh, work really uh, took place uh, in a lot of different venues. And then, uh, again, at Janet's suggestion, I did join the SNU and uh, went through their very rigorous, shall we say? Yes. (laughs) Very rigorous uh, assessment process, coursework, uh, writing papers, that uh, was something uh, to uh, really, uh, shall we say, separate the men from the boys or mm-hmm. the, the women from the girls or whatever, however you want to capture it. That's something to be really proud of. And for our listener, you know, you've heard me talk about going to Arthur Finley College and there's an SNUI.org, which has great online courses. But um what Lauren is speaking of, this is getting her credentials as a speaker and a demonstrator through the SNU, which is the body that's, I guess, above the Arthur Finley College and others. And it's a very hard thing to do. And it takes a lot of commitment, a lot of dedication and a lot of time. So it's a really big deal. So I want to congratulate you for getting that. And that was just in November, right? Of last year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Congratulations. November of last year. Yeah, it really shows um, your commitment to people and the spirit world. Well, you know, may I also say, Sandra, um, and this is perhaps helpful for your listening audience. 
I think there are many ways that we have in our journey to uh, hone and develop our skills. And I think that oftentimes we ought to, uh, we ought to begin to understand both the internal and the external process or processes that are involved in developing one's skills. I think oftentimes we have the tendency to think in a linear fashion focused only on uh, gaining the, the, the technical skills, uh, learn, uh, focused on gaining the, uh, the concepts and the facts associated. But you see, there's also, uh, I feel, a very, in, a very important internal process that goes on that we must be attuned to. Now, uh, I didn't mention them, but two also very gifted uh, mediums and teachers, Brian Robinson and Simon James, uh, they are out of Canada. They have a wonderful spiritual center. And I spent three, three years with them in study uh, with uh, the focus on school of the soul. Mm. Um, and they, they were wonderful as well. But I think one of the things that they taught me and others as well is to also go inside and examine yourself and examine yourself as you go through this process of learning, of, of acquiring the skills and the knowledge uh, in the spiritual work that we do. And what I had uh, discovered is that uh, in many ways, though I had achieved enormous success in my uh, career as a, uh, um, a mental health uh, practitioner and so forth, that despite that, because I was embarking on something very new, there were some issues around self-doubt that I experienced. And so that in the course of this process that I, I went through, uh, with the learning, with the uh, uh, working with these stellar uh, teachers and mediums and intuitives, that I had to also look at my my the, the internal process that I was going through, and the extent to which the uncertainty and the and the almost the darkness that one goes through in in learning, because oftentimes you know. We're, we're learning by faith, not necessarily by what we absolutely know. Right. And so I had to go through a process of, uh, of honing in and resonating with my own self-doubt and my own sense of, can I really do this? Am I, am I good enough? <laughs> Why am I doing this? Why don't I just read books, enjoy myself, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> sit in the sun? What, why am I doing this? And I think that that is also an essential process for anyone going through this. The extent to which we tune in, that we hone into our own self-reflection, our self-knowledge, our, our uh, realization that there is an internal process to this as well as external. Mm. Lorna, may I ask you, what is your why? Why am I doing it? Uh -huh. Well, for several, several reasons. I, I feel that I've been called to do it. I feel that uh, in the course of this journey that I have been on, I have had the opportunity to have a wonderful relationship with God. And what I feel is very much that in the course of building this relationship, that somehow um, this, uh, this woman from the Bronx, I'm originally a Bronx girl, New York City, that somehow this wondrous spirit, this, this light 
has time for me. If you could believe that with all the trillions and just all the people that they're on earth, that somehow this glorious supreme being has time for me and can work with me. And so the why is that I feel called to do it. That's one thing. The other piece is that when I am in the midst of whether I'm doing trance or healing, or mediumship, or intuitive work, or whatever it is that I'm doing, that when I am in that space, I feel an indescribable connection, an indescribable feeling that I cannot replicate doing anything else. And so... Times, for example, where I've done psychic fairs where, you know, uh, an organizer will put together a group of uh, mediums and and, and, uh, intuitives and healers. And, you know, you oftentimes will see one person after another. And often people will say, why do you do this? That's exhausting. Or aren't you exhausted after? But I will tell you, Sandra, it's incredible that I am exhilarated after. Gives you life, right? It gives me life, yes. The opportunity for me to connect with these people, the opportunity for them to open up their mind, body, and spirit to me, and that I can be the vehicle, I can be the liaison, I can be the 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 soul and spirit entity that God and the helpers, healers, guides, all of the wondrous spirit friends that they can use me to connect with these people. And that from what I, what I have been told thus far, um, that they walk away from the experience in a better place. Yes. I believe that whole your why transforms lives. And I'm sure you've seen and experienced some grief stricken people. And then something that came out of your mouth was just the thing they needed to hear to realize their loved one hasn't gone and give them purpose and be able to live life again. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and and not only that, there have been situations in which people that are in the midst of grieving where they had unanswered questions for the person that went on to spirit, or they uh, did not have the opportunity to say goodbye, or they wondered the extent to which the person had a uh, painful passion. You see, and oftentimes people that are grieving for the loss of loved ones have so many unanswered questions. They have so many, uh, so many feelings, so many anxieties, so many fears of things that were not completely settled prior to the passing of their loved one. And so the opportunity that they have to, and I will emphasize this, evidentially connect with their person and spirit. Because you see, my integrity is very important to me. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely not want to connect someone, just, you know, someone that walks in the door and says, oh, gee, my grandmother uh, died and I want to talk to her, and then all of a sudden I say, oh, yes, your grandmother's here, and she says thus and so. So we go through an evidential process in our mediumship whereby we're able to ascertain through the way the spirit person comes to me that they are, in fact, who the uh, sitter or the client uh, knows uh, by reason of information that I know nothing about. Uh, that indeed their loved one is present. So when they have that opportunity, 
it is also an opportunity for them to be able to have so many questions, so many uncertainties, so many anxieties that went unanswered. And absolutely, I think you are correct and right on with the fact that this is an enormous part and a very important part of our work. It's interesting, Lorna. I've been listening to a book on marketing because obviously my show and my book and I'm starting to put on conferences and how do I get to a larger audience? And the reason I asked you about your why is because that was one of the big questions within the book. And I'm thinking my why, and I'm not always present to it, but I went from a place of being very skeptical, living in fear, didn't believe in anything, didn't have faith death of my grandmother, death of my two little kitty cats, and death of my dad, and all that horrific grief, and everything that I've now learned about the afterlife and the courses I've taken and the people I've met, I've gone to this place where I actually experience so much love. And and I get excited about the the miracles of life and what else is possible. And I've gone from like a hope to like a knowing about the afterlife. And my why is to help people move from where I was to where I am now and really embrace that our, our life is valuable and that we're all special. And so I think just when you, maybe when I asked you the why question, you actually, you get recharged as and get that feeling of why you do it and why we do it. And how can we not share something this meaningful, you know? And there is so much joy, really. So I commend you, too, for doing the inner work to learn about yourself and go through the fear and the growth spurts and and to be where you are and to really trust the spirit world that the words that come out of your mouth when you're working with clients or sitters is what they need to hear. So... Um, you put yourself out there and what a gift you are. And it's, it's, it's uncanny. I think that you mentioned the word love because I think that I know that in the process of this journey that I embarked upon. And as I think as a result of increasing my relationship with spirit and also those in spirit, my many spirit friends, I have felt more loved and I have had the opportunity and the feeling that I can express love in a more holistic, a more expansive, a more multidimensional process or in a multidimensional way, excuse me, let me say that correctly. What, what I mean by that is I feel I was brought up to place conditions upon love or to place even a criteria on love. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I just think it's something that we grow up with. Um, you like a person before you love a person. But isn't it right. possible that you could l- love a person and like them all at the same time? Mm-hmm. Isn't, it, isn't it possible? So I feel as though I have been also given the opportunity to expand my experience of love and also to expand the opportunity to give love. Yes, most Beautiful. definitely. Yeah, I remember my brother telling me after the birth of his first child, he said, Sandra, I never knew that this much love was possible. I'm not a mother, so I don't know that love. But now what I'm doing, sharing the interviews, having some really great friends, my own spirituality, my own connection to the spirit world, in my shoes, like I have never experienced this feeling of love, and it feels so good. And so to be able to help people ignite whatever they're passionate about and and get us on this journey if you want to. I mean, I don't push in anything on anybody, but there is just this love available that is great. And you can't help but want to share and you can't help but smile. And 
it's it's good stuff and it's addictive stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Lorna, I want to ask you about the world of trance, or as our UK friends say, trance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what interested you in that? And maybe you could describe what it is and, and how you're using it. Okay. Well, my interest came as a part of my development as a medium and also at the suggestion of one of my teachers that I, that, uh, I, I should explore it. Um, one, one of my, again, very learned and uh, inspiring teachers uh, really said that there was something that I might uh, that I might experience uh, in terms of trance expanding my ability as a medium and also beginning to explore the many facets of trance and maybe finding uh, a home in one of those uh, various facets. And so uh, to that end, I joined a trance and physical mediumship development group. And just to take away the mystique out of trance, trance basically means an altered state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, it has kind of a... a uh, da 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 da. <laughs> right. Kind of uh, feeling for some, spooky there. That that's better. A spooky feeling by uh, among people, but in fact, it really is uh, something that is uh, every day. I mean, when we sleep, we're in an altered state of yes. consciousness. So, an altered state of consciousness has its degrees. So, again, when people think of trance, they think of people that are in a, a, a heavy or more intense uh, altered state, when in fact, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as I said, I went to a trance development group, trance and physical, and I continue that to this day. Uh, and I just want to make a... a a kind of commercial here, quote unquote, okay. and that is to say, our our work that we do, uh, it is essential that we see ourselves as continuous students. So I sure I am certain my uh, wonderful uh, stellar teachers, even at, at Arthur Finley and other places, that they sit in circle or they sit in development groups or they sit even perhaps with their peers. In, in increasing their skills. So Absolutely. this is something I really believe in uh, in terms of my own development. So I sat in that circle for quite some time, and then I began to feel uh, 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 in workshops that I attended in trance and looking at the different uh, facets of trance. I studied trance philosophy. I, I did some trance healing. Um, and I felt with the trance healing that I was doing, I felt a special connection. And so I decided to pursue one-on-one -on -one development with the great uh, trance healer and teacher, Helen DeVita. Mm -hmm. Now, Helen is in Ireland, <laughs> so there had to be a way that she and I could connect. And so I would uh, meet with her online uh, and uh, have uh, both didactic work with her. And I also would have to present her with uh, readings that I did, trans healing uh, work that I did uh, via uh, recordings and Zoom and different things like that. And during that process with her, uh, she was able to um, uh, critique and helped me develop as a trans medium. And I continued to study with her. Uh, and uh, she uh, calls me her apprentice now. Um, and by the way, I say most humbly that during my initial sessions with her, she told me that I was born to do this work. She said that. And uh, that continues to 
make me feel humble. Mm -hmm. It continues to make me feel uh, emotional because I still was in my period of self-reflection and self-examination. And there was a time at one point where I said to her, I'm sure you say that to all your students oh, no. as if I, it was hard for me to accept. Right. Yes, I'm telling you, this is a process for many of us. Sure. And I hope it's okay, even though we're talking to maybe 5,000 people, that I share my vulnerability. It's because important. I think the vulnerability makes me human. It's part of my humanity and makes us all human. So she said, Lorna, <laughs> mm -hmm. in her way. <laughs> I do not say that to all my students. <laughs> uh, I I am telling you the absolute truth. I uh, feel that you have a special proclivity for this work. And you will see as you do it. And, and absolutely, she didn't lie. Because I, I continue to uh, do uh, trans healing. As I said, I have a trans healing demonstration coming up this uh, Saturday. I also offer it online. Now, you know, some people would question the extent to which we can do healing online. And I say to them, my initial work was on telephone, mm -hmm. if you could believe it, because at that time, there wasn't online, or maybe there was, and I just didn't know about it. But we did most of our work on telephone. So I was always a trained to see energy as a living, breathing entity that could, uh, that could flow, that could be recognized, that could be experienced in whatever way, that it could, uh, uh, that it could go through a computer, that it could go through a telephone. So I guess in part, uh, that belief system that I have enabled me to uh, be able to do trans healing on uh, online, on uh, via the computer. And I will tell you, um, it, it, it is a marvelous uh, intervention for people that are interested. Um, I have a group of spirit doctors that work with me. Um, and in the course of the trans healing uh, experience, these spirit doctors come forward and, and they're not only doctors, I should say, they are practitioners. So I have had herbalists that work with me. I have uh, uh, all sorts of different midwives, all sorts of different practitioners, healing practitioners that come through and actually uh, perform a uh, a remedy, an intervention in behalf of the person that I'm working with. They also use me uh, because of my extensive background in mental health and addiction. They utilize me for emotional um, challenges that people are experiencing. And so oftentimes what will happen is they will they will speak through me to the uh, client that I am working with to help their healing with respect to whatever it is that is going on in their lives or has gone on in their la lives in terms of a, a historical situation. Uh, I'm sure... Uh, Sandra, you're aware and uh, your listening audience is aware of the extent to which trauma impacts people's lives. Yes. Um, both uh, in terms of uh, in a physical way, uh, also in a non-physical way. Uh, people can be traumatized by uh, things that I, they've seen or things that has, have been said to them. Uh, and so from a historical standpoint, we also can experience various traumas that uh, have impacted and will impact our lives. 
And so this is another aspect that uh, our healing uh, practitioners that work through me uh, intervene uh, with people that come to see me. So it is a, a somewhat of a lengthy process. Mm-hmm. This isn't something that is hurried um, because uh, what will happen is during the uh, trance healing, different spirit practitioners will come through and focus in on whatever it is that is challenging that individual. Do you have additional questions or was I clear enough? I think you're clear. It's, it's pretty incredible to me because I've taken a couple of these trance courses myself. And I, well, maybe one of my questions would be how aware are you of what the spirit people are doing? Or are you really trying to get your own mind out of the way? Because certainly if they speak, um, I've had the, done some of the trance speaking and I know every time I started like that wow experience, uh, then all of a sudden it would stop. I would have to get my own thoughts out of the way. And is that, is that how you work as well? Absolutely. Um, now, when we when we are taught how to go into our trance experience, it is definitely levels. So when I talk about it in terms of trance being altered levels of consciousness, those levels of consciousness vary, and it varies from client to client. Now, let let me say this. I tend to be, and excuse me for, for bouncing into mediumship, but trans healing is, is mediumship and it's also healing. Mm-hmm. So in my mediumship, I am uh, not terribly active because, again, and Andy Bing talks about this, let the spirit person tell their story. Let them unfold with you and so that unfoldment and that that way of intervening is also the way I uh, manage my my trance I let the spirit doctors control Mm -hmm. I let them handle their business now in terms of the level of trance it varies again from from client to client some of it, I am not in a deep state. So I can uh, express things that I see. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they do speak through me with their own voice, their own mannerisms. There are also situations in which there is overshadowing, uh, bordering on transfiguration, where there are facial changes, where there are uh, uh, differences in energies around me that also take place during the trans healing. So the way I conduct things, if this is in a, a demonstration uh, situation, I will ask uh, people in the audience not only to send energies and positive thought, but also to make note of what they see. And I also ask the uh, client that I'm working with to make notes of what they are feeling and experiencing as I am going through the trance healing for them. There have been times, for example, where a a person that I was working with had a problem with their eyes, where the trans practitioner uh, actually had some type of device that uh, was placed on the individual eyes that I saw. There was another situation where this uh, person had, I believe, a problem in their stomach area. And it seemed as though the uh, spirit uh, doctors had some sort of machine that they uh, 
that they had on the person's stomach. And the, and the person that I was working with actually felt some very mild vibration as I was describing what it was I was seeing. So it varies from person to person. I think the, the major issue or the major challenge is uh, for uh, the trans state to take place and for the recipient to feel calm, to have uh, positive energies, um, to allay their anxiety and fears, that this is a safe and secure process and has nothing to do with being harmed or hurt. Now, uh, I have heard, not experienced, I have heard situations where uh, clients have said, they have sought out people that uh, were healers or, or perhaps trans healers, and they were told some horrific things, uh, that they were going to die in six months, that they uh, had an incurable illness, uh, all, all sorts of things that I, quite frankly, question, question right. the extent to which uh, it was even truthful. I would say thus far in my career, um, I have not seen anything uh, of that nature. Um, and uh, quite frankly, I always encourage my clients to seek the intent attention of their uh, physicians and other practitioners to uh, deal with uh, any sort of uh, medical challenge or emotional challenge mm -hmm. that they are dealing with. I think in any field, Lorna, there are people with integrity and people not. Uh, my mom always would say, you know, what do you call the guy that graduated at the bottom of his medical class? And the answer is doctor, <laughs> right? So yes. there's many yes. people that can call themselves a healer or a medium or so many things. And I think one of the fears people have is how do they know somebody's trustworthy and real or one of these charlatans that may charge a lot of money and make a lot of promises. So it's always good to go by word of mouth and hear people's experiences. And those people that will predict a death or things like that, like to me, that doesn't have integrity. Um, yeah, I know that's all I'm going to say about that, you know, and, and that we really need to research and trust and talk to our friends and um, I, you know, I have no problem recommending you because I know who you are and, and what you're about. But there are those people that do try to prey on the grieving and, and the weak. And let's face it, if you have, a, or I have a really tough illness, I think I would try just about anything. You're right. Yeah. You're right. So with your trance healings, um, you're the vehicle, I realize people work through you, but have people had experiences? I, I'm Obviously, you can't disclose real personal stuff, but I just want to get some ideas of maybe either physical or like an emotional healing that people are able to move on in their life. Is there anything you could share about that? Well, it's, it's so funny that you are mentioning this because I had an enormously wonderful experience in trans healing this week uh, with a person. And I asked her if uh, she, she wrote me and I asked her if I could post her, uh, her experience uh, on my, both on my website and maybe on my uh, Facebook. Um, and she said, absolutely. I stand by everything. I've written because I was so enormously helped uh, by the experience with you. Uh, we initially went in uh, with a focus on a, 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 an ailment uh, that was uh, of concern to her. And uh, for lots of different reasons, it, it turned to discussing uh, both uh, career opportunities with her and some emotional healing that needed to take place. And I will tell you, as we moved from discussing that initial ailment that she had 
into the career and then into uh, the emotional healing part, um, she became uh, much more enthralled, much more emotional, much more connected to what it was I was saying. And Sandra, I know as a medium, you understand that while you're giving the information, you you don't understand necessarily what the extent to which the information has meaning to the client. Right. You you don't know that. You know that you have this information. You know this information is important because you can feel it's important. Right. Right. So you give it, and when you give it, you see the reaction of the information to the to the recipient. You are enthralled because you know that you are saying something, that you are giving something, that you are sharing something, and that perhaps also in in that process, the spirit person's energies are being shared with the recipient. And it is having enormous meaning for the opportunity for transformation of that individual. And so as I was talking to her about these career moves, and as I was talking to her about these uh, emotional healing issues, she became, she became very tearful. She became uh, uh, very uh, emotional. And I knew within myself, we were hitting where we needed to hit in her, her, uh, in her healing experience. And when I uh, begin the the uh, the trans healing, I always uh, begin with a prayer or uh, intention. I don't necessarily ask my client to play, pray with me because sometimes they they you know do not feel prayer is helpful or something that is part of their own experience. So that's unnecessary. What's necessary is for me to be able to uh, attune and blend with my spirit uh, practitioners through prayer. So in that prayer, I do ask for cellular healing. I ask for healing to take place at the cellular level. So this is not just hopefully a superficial process. This is a comprehensive focused process where our spirit practitioners understand that to the best of our ability at this point in the person's life and time, we want to get to as best as we can the, the root uh, of, their, of their challenge. So we ask for cellular healing and we also ask for a prescription of life so that we can help them begin to understand what are some of the strategies that they need to employ in order to work on their particular challenge after the trans healing. So I think it's important that people leave the experience with feeling empowered that they need to continue with their own specialized toolbox of strategies that help them to continue the healing that they have experienced. And by the way, there are times where there is an immediate uh, reaction to the healing experience, and sometimes it is more lengthy, where the person may begin to feel uh, some difference uh, a few days after the healing experience. Yeah, I think this is really great conversation, Lorna. And I'm even thinking of the great Harry Edwards, who anybody interested in yes. learning about yes. trance healing, he was probably the best of the best. And you're yeah, absolutely right. And physical healings happened, emotional healings. And back in the day when my dad was suffering worst with cancer, I, this was before I got into this whole world, really, of what I know now. But I tried every kind of healing that I could read about and learn about to do. And although 
he didn't have a physical healing and didn't continue on life on earth. Now, looking back at everything I've learned, there may have been some emotional healing. There's, there's different things. And had he been healed to 100%, Sandra Champlain would never have gone on this journey to learn about grief, learn, experience grief, learn about healing, and we would never be having this conversation today. So I think it's always great to try different healing modalities, but would you agree that sometimes the healing does take place on an emotional level? And, you know, who are we to say what kind of healing is going to occur? I'm sure you give everything you've got in prayer for the best for the individual. Right. I, 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 you're absolutely correct, uh, Sandra. And I, I would also say that we need to put this word healing in quotes because I believe that healing is a, a, a expanded word. It's a, it, it has multiple me- meanings and it has multiple impact in lots of different uh, situations. And I do believe there is a connection between the mind, body, and spirit. So that uh, healing that takes place in one area of our bodies impacts other parts of our, our bodies, mind, and spirit. So I think it's important for us to begin to see healing in, a, in an expa- expanded sense. When you were talking about your father, I wondered to what extent healing and and just as wondering healing for him meant that he could hopefully manage quote unquote the challenges associated with his illness that ultimately would lead to his his death um so that perhaps healing for him did not necessarily mean that he would have an end to his cancer right oftentimes people have that false belief that that is the only type of healing that can occur. Sometimes the healing uh, in my own life, I also lost uh, my mother. uh, And I think the healing that I offered to her was really helping her to make her transition to spirit. Mm -hmm. Because I think that she had difficulty in making the decision to leave us to leave her children, her grandchildren, to uh, go on to the spirit world. So for quite a long time, she remained here suffering. So healing for her was the opportunity for her to make the final decision to uh, go through that, that door or whatever it was, or be greeted by our relatives to move on to the spirit world. Um, healing for Others may be physical, totally physical. Healing for uh, other people, as I explained, is uh, more emotional. Um, So I think healing, people have to begin to understand that healing has lots of different faces. And that is essential when they are looking at various healing aspects, that they look at it in a very broad, expanded way and open themselves up to the extent possible to the opportunities for healing to occur and not just see it in a linear fashion like we have uh, 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 an infection. So we go to the doctor, the doctor examines us and says, take this pill and you will feel better. Well, that is a partial healing, right? Right. (laughs) But it may not be the full healing or the full understanding of healing of the challenges that we might, uh, we might need. Um, So for example, in that same uh, way of thinking, they, the person takes the pill, they feel better, but they still don't fulfill fully healed. And they may not be, they may not feel fully heal because there are other aspects of their mind, body, and spirit that need healing. 
Makes perfect sense. And I think any one of us listening right now, of course, we want to have a perfect, healthy body. But if we can look at ourselves emotionally, there are things that need healing. We all have them as part of being human. And it's really wonderful that you say put the quotations around healing because there is so much more. I've I've met many healthy people that have a lot of money that inside they're a wreck <laughs> and they could use some emotional <laughs> healing. So that's part of being human. Lorna, at, uh, time's running out pretty fast here, um, but I want to just talk about some of the things you do because you do demonstrations of healing, um, don't you? I mean, aside from one-on-ones with people. Absolutely. Yes, I do. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm doing one uh, this Saturday uh, in uh, Teaneck uh, at the Rock Collage Center on Cedar Lane. Uh, that will be an informational session, and I'll do one demonstration. And um, I do uh, other uh, events, mediumship. Um, I'll be teaching uh, trance healing uh, at the Montclair Metaphysical Center in July. So, um, and I'm available to do uh, one-on-one trans healing and of course mediumship and psychic work uh, on uh, online uh, via Zoom, Skype, Messenger, anything like that. That's great. And for our listener, you may be listening to this in 2020. We are recording this April 24th, 2019. So I'm sure, Lorna, people can go to your website, lornajhines.com, anytime and and see what you're up to. And they may also email me. Um, I think email is a great way to be in touch. Um, And they can email me at lornajhines at gmail.com. Easy to remember. Very easy. Very easy. (laughs) Easy peasy. And you can give your email address and sign up. This is what I did this morning on your website. And do you send things out to your community, your email I do. I do. I have, um, I call it love notes from my heart. And I send out uh, various inspirational things that come to me that I think might be helpful to people. I, I ask for guidance on this from my spirit friend mm-hmm. so that I can hopefully impact some of the lives of people that decide they want to hear from me. And uh, by the way, I don't share <laughs> your your uh, website information with anyone. It's only for me. And uh, I very much want to impact as many people as possible. And besides that, it's a good place to hear about different things that I'm doing in the event that you want to participate in, in one of the uh, either uh, online or face-to-face opportunities. Love it. Love it. Any closing words you want to leave with the audience? Well, the closing words um, are really opening Mm -hmm. in some respects. And, um, I would say that uh, I am open to serve spirit in the way that is most helpful to people to promote their opportunities for success, for satisfaction, for joy and peace, and that if there are people among your audience that feel as though I can be helpful in this endeavor, that I welcome the opportunity to help, I welcome the opportunity to serve, and I welcome the opportunity to initiate, if they so feel this is something they are interested in, the opportunity for personal transformation, whatever that means transformation in terms of the use of mediumship, transformation through the use of psychic uh, soul readings, and of course, through trans healing. And I just want to say that 
among those that are listening that I offer multitude of blessings to you, multitude of opportunities for your healing, for joy and inspiration for your life. And that if there are those among you that are in a state of sadness, despair, or disempowerment, know that this particular experience is not the part of the experience of the divine plan for you. That there is, I feel, tacit information and evidence that says to me that we are not to suffer, that we are to have joy in our lives, and that opportunity for joy is available to us all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank Lorna, you. It's been a privilege talking with you today, for sure. Because I'm a listener as well as the interviewer. Every episode I put my life in as well. So for our listener, you can visit Lorna's website at lornajhines.com. This is episode 306 of We Don't Die Radio. All episodes can be found at wedontdieradio.com. And if you want to join my email list, which is called the Insiders Club, I have a very healing audio called How to Survive Grief. I also have a PDF file called Sandra's 19 Reasons to Believe in the Afterlife. And it says you can read several chapters from my book, We Don't Die. Here's the secret. It's the whole book. I don't want the price of a book to get in between uh, you and getting some pretty awesome information. So with all that, I want to thank again our wonderful Lorna J. Hines. Thanks, Lorna. Thank you. And thank you, listener, for being here. You're not just listeners, you're my friends. And I don't know if you're like me, but I don't often share this side of myself with people in my life because they might look at me a little bit funny that I believe in the afterlife and all these things. But I know with you and the community that we have, uh, consider me, Lorna, and other guests, friends. If you want to meet up with people face-to-face, it is a great place you can start. And if you're on Facebook, join the We Don't Die listeners Facebook group. And there's been so many friendships that have developed. And now we're getting to see each other face to face in person. And it's wonderful. So you have a resource of people that care, that speak the same language and want you to have a great life. So in closing, my name is Sandra Champlain. And always, I feel so privileged and honored that I get to interview great guests like Lorna and be your host on We Don't Die Radio. I believe to the bottom of my soul that we are eternal souls having a human experience that life is an education for the soul it's not always easy but our life on earth is important healing is real miracles are real mediumship is real your loved ones are around be open and i tell you there's an amount of love that you can be experienced that you have not experienced yet So be open for that in your life. So I want to thank you for listening and we'll see you soon. 